بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أفمن كان ميتا فأحييناه وجعلنا له نورا يمشي به في الناس وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم النور إذا دخل الصدر انفتح سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين There are two types of actions that human beings do that any of us do one are considered to be the pious actions and the good actions and the other ones are considered to be the evil actions or the bad actions I mean that's basically every act that we do is either going to be a good or a bad one and there's no other you know possibility I mean even the neutral actions become good or bad based on our uh, intentions subhanallah now the thing is that if we do anything according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then they also become part of our a'mal saliha our righteous actions and our pious actions and then anything that is opposed to that, anything that is of frivolous uh, nature, then that becomes a bad action sometimes. Now the thing is that the reason why this is so important to understand is because of a number of reasons. The primary reason being that every action that we do in this world has an effect on us. Right? It's who we are. Because we're not doing that action in a vacuum. It has an effect on the way we feel. That's why we actually obviously do the action in the first place. And that's why... It's led us to do that action because of the way we feel. So everything that we do generally has an indication of our thought process, our mentality, our psychology, our outlook in life, our ambitions, our goals. We're, we're very complex human beings and everything about us is interlinked, right? I mean, the only person, I mean, even the foolish person, when they do a weird act, then although we understand that they've got maybe a problem or something, but at the end of the day, it still indicates their state. Right of being foolish. So, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned uh, on one occasion, for example, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam led a salat, and then uh, the, one of the Sahaba who had uh, taken part in the salat had some defect with his wudu. There was some shortcoming in his wudu. So after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam completed his salat, he he said, "Who is it?" Because of whose wudu and whose salat, essentially our salat was effective, affected negatively. Now the Prophet ﷺ in mean, his state could understand this and he could feel this and he could sense this. But the most important thing here is that the muhaddithin mentioned that even due to shortcoming in, in a person's wudu, it affected the jama'ah as a whole. So that tells us that when we make jama'ah together, when we do things even as a congregation, what every person is feeling there is what every person is doing there or has done there. It's going to have an effect at some level. It's going to contribute to the overall feeling and benefit or nuqsan and uh, detriment of the, of the whole community or of the whole congregation. Subhanallah. Right. So that's why the more pious and righteous people you have and the more uh, awliya that you have among you and the more good people that you have among you there's going to be a greater effect about these things if one person's wudu can affect the salat like that then obviously you can understand that there's going to be an effect and influence of different things on our community and our our, uh, our household so even one person doing something good in the house whether that be one of the children who's gained hidayah and guidance or whether it be just the mother or just the father eventually there's going to be a benefit as long as they do it properly there's going to be a benefit to all of their surroundings and it's going to be benefit uh, for all the people around the barakah is going to be there on the other hand, we also know from a hadith that the Prophet wasallam said that every time a person commits a sin, a black dot appears on the heart. I mean, most of us should know this hadith. When we make tawbah, that black dot disappears. And if you don't make tawbah, then the, block, uh, the black dot remains there. Then when you do another sin, another dot appears and so on. And it accumulates like that. In, in fact, it gets to a stage where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in, uh, in, in Surah Al-Qiyamah, Kalla bal that it's cause ran ran comes from rain which means it's essentially become rusty so um, for a, imagine something that has become rusty obviously it shows that it's been neglected to such a degree 
you know, on, on cars sometimes, if it's had a massive scratch or something like that and you leave it, you don't treat it, eventually with the water and everything, it will keep corroding it and affecting it until it becomes totally yellowish. And that's, you know, the reaction of the metals and it creates that. Then obviously it can be, uh, it can be cured, but it has to be treated then properly. So likewise with the heart, you've got the same kind of situation that if you've left it for such a long time that, uh, that it's become neglected to such a degree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says rana ala that this is what's happened uh, to, their, to their heart. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about iman and kufr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says one thing which we should all be extremely proud of. Because what it is is that if Allah, if anybody in this world that is considered to be a respected individual or a superstar of some sort, or for example, uh, somebody that's well known and um, in a high position, and if they were to say, like if they were to say to you that you are my friend, right? So the initiation is taking place on, from their side. They are saying that you are my friend. One is that people in that kind of situation, they'll say, oh, those are all my supporters or all my friends. But he, he or she is not reciprocating that, right? He or she is not reciprocating that. By, by saying that I'm also their friend. But what about when some really high level person uh, first makes this statement and makes the and starts the, you know, starts it from their side, initiates from their side that you are my friend. Imagine how good you will feel. So look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. He is our absolute master creator that we owe everything to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is what he says. He says, Allahu waliyu ladina amanu. He, he says, Allah is the wali of those people who believe. What does wali mean? Wali means friend, associate, intimate accomplice, right? It means um, a, ve a very, very close friend, somebody who will take care of you. That's what you call a wali, somebody who will take care of you, a guardian, right? Absolute guardian and fully responsible for you. So Allah is saying, Allah is the friend of those who believe. Now, what, what an announcement that is. What an announcement that is. Now, if we're to turn around and say, we don't care, right? Then how much of a detriment and deprivation is that? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that's doing the initiation by saying that Allah is the wali of those who believe, then we on our side need to make do, make good with that and say, yes, we are also yours because he's already made that declaration. Now, we have to make our declaration and they can't be empty declarations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created two types of people as he says uh, in the Quran He is the one who created you فَمِنْكُمْ كَافِرٌ right? And among you there are those who are disbelievers and وَمِنْكُمْ مُؤْمِنٌ and there are those among you who are believers so you've got disbelievers and you've got believers so you've got two types of people in this world now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then also describes the acts of both of these people, you know, what it brings. People who have belief and they do good acts, it's a source of nur and light. And those who, uh, aren't, uh, those who aren't believers in God and believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the proper way, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that <clears throat> uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran at the end of the surah to nur, uh, sorry, in uh, the, the verses of nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوْ كَظُلُمَاتٍ or it's like darknesses, not darkness, but darknesses. And then just in case people didn't understand what darknesses meant, Allah says, كَظُلُمَاتٍ فِي بَحْرٍ لُجِّيٍّ يَغْشَاهُ مَوْجٌ مِنْ فَوْقِهِ مَوْجٌ مِنْ فَوْقِهِ سحاب. You've got this very tumultuous ocean in which the waves are upon other waves. So you've got like double sets of waves, right? overcoming this so you can imagine the darkness with all of these waves thrashing over you and then for uh, above that is the sahab above that are, are these heavy clouds so you can imagine what kind of darkness is being spoken about here and then just in case people didn't understand that metaphor properly the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says مَوْجٌ مِنْ فَوْقِهِ مَوْجٌ مِنْ فَوْقِهِ سَحَابٌ ظُلُمَاتٌ بَعْضُهَا فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ إِذَا أَخْرَجَ يَدَهُ لَمْ يَكَدْ يَرَاهَا that it, it, th th this is such a darkness, it's darkness upon darkness that if a person stretches out uh, their hand, they, won't, it, they probably won't even see their own hands. Now, the hands are so close to you and once you get used to the darkness, sometimes you can actually make out your own hands. But this is such a darkness that you can't even make out your own hands. This is the metaphor that is being struck to explain the actions of the people who don't believe in, in, in the Supreme Being, right? In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن لَمْ يَجْعَلِ اللَّهُ لَهُ نُورًا فَمَا لَهُ مِن نُور Those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed no nur for, they will have no nur. So we are essential, it's essential for us to try to strive for this nur because Allah has already given us Allah has already given us some level of ni'mah by giving us the uh, by by giving us iman and by giving us oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why one of the ulama he mentions that if a person is in a very bad state, if a person is in an extremely bad state of not being able to good deeds, uh, do good deeds, you know, always disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they want to change, then you still that he says that you've got two ways to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One is that you think of Allah's ni'mah on you, which is that he, you still have belief, you still have oneness of, Allah subhanahu, uh, oneness of Allah in mind. That's your belief, you love that belief, you wouldn't want it to be taken away from you, but you can't do anything good. So now turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Oh Allah, you've given me iman and you've also given me this good, uh, you've, you, you've given me tawheed, you know, uh, uh, belief in the oneness of Allah, uh, belief in your oneness. So now, I want you to, uh, I am thankful for this much ni'mah and I want you to give me more ni'mah, right? And you just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this state of absolute need and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. Now, the one thing that we have to realize from the verse, Allahu waliyu alladheena amanu, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he is, he is creating an association between himself and, your, uh, and ourselves by saying Allah is your friend. Allah is your guardian and your intimate uh, associate, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that. So essentially he is providing a nisbah, an association, a link, right? Between us and himself. And he's initiating that. And that's why anybody who then becomes associated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as opposed to those who disbelieve, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ He will take them out of these darknesses into the nur and the light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse, Alif Lam Ra, Kitabun Anzalna Hu Ilaik. This is a book that we have revealed to you. Litukhrijan nasa min al-dhulumati ilan nur to take the people out. So this book is there to take the people out of the darkness into the light. That's the whole purpose, into the light of Iman and the light of uh, Jannah and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can be in Jannah in the hereafter. It's mentioned that the, the great scholar of the subcontinent whose name was Sheikh Ahmed Sarhindi, they call him the Mujaddid, uh, the, the reviver of the second cent uh, centenary. He was once in, uh, called quickly, urgently by a friend of his, by, by somebody, that, you know, by an associate of his, who had a friend who was on his deathbed and he wasn't able to say the kalima. So this uh, friend of the person who was dying, he called uh, Sheikh uh, Mujaddid Al-Thani, Sheikh Ahmed Sarhindi. He said, can you come and please, you know, can read something and, uh, uh, and maybe this person will, will say the kalima. So he went there, Sheikh Mujaddid went there and uh, for such a long time he's trying to do everything that he can. But this person's heart is just not accepting any kind of change. He just refuses to read. He just totally refuses to read. So eventually what the outcome was that this person had very close associates. Most of his association was with disbelief and people who disbelieved and he had no association with believers and so on as much, right? It was very weak and that's why he's being deprived because his heart had become, uh, uh, had become um, uh, you can say, uh, inclined in that direction. His heart, even though he was professing to be a believer, even though he may have had a believing name, but his everything, his love, his affection, his emotion, and his, uh, his entire, entire inclination was towards that side. And that's why he's being deprived by the kalima on his deathbed. So you see the nisbat and the, the association that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had offered for him as well and declared for him, he had rejected it and not done good with it. And that's why this is coming about. This is the problem with corruption of beliefs. This is the problem of corruption of our ideology when we start to love things of this world and things of disbelief of this world than we, than we uh, you know, than of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now l let us take one, one final example here, Yusuf alayhi salam. When he was, the story is famous of Yusuf alayhi salam, he was made in charge of the grain and uh, all of uh, the... Uh, the, the sustenance of the land to, the, to distribute the supplies of the land. He became that minister. What happened is one particular youth came to him 
and he gave him as you know the, the allotted share that he would give to everybody he gave he gave that much to uh, to that person as well and then afterwards the person said something to him so somebody was observing this you know people around were observing uh, observing this so the, this person then said something to him and yusuf alayhi salam like broke out in a smile and and gave him some more right he gave him some more so later uh, somebody asked him that what happened here actually it was allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who asked him he said why did you give him uh, why did you give this person more after whatever he said so uh, he said uh, oh my lord initially i gave him the allotted share that i give to everybody but then when he told me that he was that young infant he was that infant who had declared my uh, purity and my chastity when I had that problem with the, with the wife of the Aziz of Misr, of Egypt, when you know, she tried to seduce me and uh, I was going to be in big trouble and this infant spoke about how to determine whether I was to blame or whether she was to blame. He came and told me that he is that child, right? So now he's obviously grown up. So then I got so happy that he'd helped me uh, to purify myself and to safe, uh, safeguard my chastity that I gave him as much as I could give him, you know, th uh, through, through my share that I was able to I, I was able to give him now this is a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a prophet of Allah who's got this mercy upon somebody who's helped him out in the past right who's assisted him in the past who's declared his who's essentially declared his chastity that's what this infant did so Yusuf alayhi salam does whatever is in his power to make him happy by giving him these extra supplies now can you imagine that us being the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are constantly declaring his rububiyyah. We're constantly declaring that he is our guardian, he is our Lord, he is our caretaker, he is our creator, he is the only deity worthy, worthy of worship, he is the direction of our worship. Then on the day of judgment, you think he's going to, you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to deprive us on that day? If Yusuf alayhi salam won't deprive that child that said this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that said this to him, he tried to give him as much as he could. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has infinite bounties and mercies at his disposal. That's why he gave, you know, that's why he gave him whatever he could give him. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, you know, has, has the ultimate uh, supply at his disposal. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when somebody declares that this is what I used to believe in, right, and I used to call you my Lord, then, and I used to worship you, then you can imagine what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, um, uh, will be thinking and giving him at that time. There's another story that's related about a person whose wife did something really bad. Right, she did something really bad. Now he had obviously the ability to divorce her. Now she's asking for forgiveness. He had the ability to divorce her or to get really angry to do something. But he just forgave her purely for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, thinking that okay, she's, you know, a servant of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and if I forgive her, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will forgive me. So in the hereafter, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala forgives him because of that, because. Uh, somebody because he was merciful to another creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had m mercy with him as well and one final thing just about the link aspect when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing this association and this link to us now imagine it you've got um, a bag of cement that is being sold in one of these hardware supply stores one company comes and buys some Another company comes and buys some, right? It's the same type of cement or stone or brick, right? Made by the same manufacturer, costing the same amount of money. One company comes and buys it and they're building a masjid. So it's going to now go into the wall of a masjid and so on, right? And the other one, it's going to be used in some toilet somewhere to build some toilets. Now, can you imagine that it's the same kind of brick, but now one brick People are going to be praying there, etc. And the other one, it's a place for relieving oneself. Can you understand how one has been honored and one has been demoted in a sense? Right? Although this is just an example. But this is the same thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored us. He's told us that, look, I'm making my association with you. Now, if we don't associate ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do enough from ourselves and just live a long life of sins that create dhulumat and darknesses and oppress ourselves. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Oppression is a source of darknesses on the day of judgment. Then 
what are we doing to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is offering us and we are not reciprocating, we're not giving back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq for us to realize this nisbah and this association, this attribution to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as His servants whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed for and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised so much too. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not deprive us of that association. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.